G'day trendsetters, John with Gravel Cyclist. In today's video, I'm taking this pair of wheels that are currently fit with a pair of 700C by 35mm tubeless tyres and I'm going to replace them with a pair of 700C by 38mm tyres. Now in the process, I'm hoping to reuse most of the sealant for both of these wheels. The tools for this particular job are a valve core tool, a container for sealant, a syringe tool, and this is by Holdfast Cycling. They call the x furrer very helpful. A tire lever, a pair of new tires, namely Panorama Gravel King 700C by 38 millimeter tires, orange seal endurance formula sealant, and some paper towels, which are going to clean up the mess uh, of any residual sealant. And down here is the trusty Topeak Joe Blow Booster Pump, which I have reviewed earlier on the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel, and I will link in the video description below. So the first order of business is to deflate the tires. And I'm going to make that process a little bit quicker by removing the valve core. I next want to break the bead, and you can hear from that sound, that has pretty much just happened. And I'm going to break the bead on both sides of the tire. That's now accomplished. Next I'll use my trusty Pedro's tire lever to start the removal of the tire itself. I'm not going to crack it all the way because I want to try and capture much of this sealant as I can. And I'm going to move the camera down so you can see this. It's really dripping out. See it right there? So trying to capture all of this sealant while filming is not exactly optimal. As you can see, I'm wobbling all over the place and spilling everywhere, but uh, <laughs> usually I'm more precise when I'm not being filmed. So I simply use the syringe to draw as much of the sealant as I can out of the tire. There you go, I've got a pretty good chunk. Now I'm going to repeat the process on the other wheel. I'm going to be lazy, remove the valve core. There it goes, all the air's out. Too easy. Break the bead. Then once again, take our tire lever. And extract the rest of the sealant. I probably extracted about one and a half uh, containers worth of sealant from both tires, so that's good. I know you need to add another half to uh, get a full deployment of sealant into these tires. This is something I've been doing for years. I've never had a problem with um, the reuse sealant not working. And pardon me as I spray sealant all over the place here in the, from the tube. But um, like I said, it's a really good way to extend the life of your sealant. Save yourself a bit of cash in the meantime. So there we go, we've got two wheels cleaned up, ready for fresh tires. Now I'm gonna cut this a little bit short in the video because no one wants to watch me mounting tires in real time. It's a bit excruciatingly boring. But as mentioned earlier, they are Panarasa Gravel King SK 700 by 38 millimeters. I wanted a little bit uh, wider tire for uh, a couple of events I have coming up pretty soon and a few millimeters can definitely help. As you can see, I've got the wheels mounted up here. And incidentally, these are NVG23s, which I have reviewed already on the gravelcyclist.com website, and they gave me absolutely no problems mounting these lovely tires. Now I've got the uh, secondary air cylinder of my Topeak Joe Blow Booster ready to go with 120 PSI. So if I have this set up correctly, this should hypothetically pop onto the rim straight away, and I Got to mention, 
I have the valve core removed, I want to just initially, with no seal inside, get the tire to pop onto the bead of the rim. It's out of camera here, but I've got the cylinder charged like I mentioned. I'm about to release it. That is the sound of sweet success. Time to pop the rear tire into the bead of the rear wheel. Again, there's no valve core inside the valve. Cylinder's ready to go. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. So next I'll just release all of the air and uh, fill both tires with sealant, install the valve cores, inflate the pressure, and I'm done. Here we go, we've got some reconstituted sealant, which I'm going to reuse. Oops, spilling it already, bloody hell. This never happens whenever I don't film, you know. Gently squeeze it into the tire. Here we go, we've got a full two ounces, or 56 milliliters into the rear tire. I will then reinsert the valve core using my trusty Park Tools valve core tool. So this is now ready for inflation, but I'm going to fill the front wheel with sealant as well. And here we go with the front wheel. Let's be careful this time. Just gently squeeze in the sealant. Here we go, a full two ounces. 56 milliliters is now inside this tire. And because these tires are safely onto the bead, there's a very slim chance of sealant leaking out, except for when you're like me and you spill it outside of the valve core. Install the valve and of course, make sure it's open for inflation. That'd be very silly, wouldn't it? Tighten it down appropriately. That's good. Make sure he's open. This one's a little bit sticky, so hopefully it inflates okay. Next inflate, and we are almost done. I took the liberty of pumping up the inflation cylinder for the pump here again. So the valve is completely open. Install the chuck, close it down, and then pull the switch. And it's inflating nicely. This valve has definitely got some uh, sealant residue, but uh, it's holding, well, it's gonna hold about 30, yeah, 35 PSI, 34 PSI, not bad. And ready to go with the rear, make sure the valve is open. It is indeed, could be sticky again. These things always get clogged up with sealant. I should probably buy some more cores. Okay, flip the switch. and inflating beautifully, much faster than the front wheel, and about 40 PSI, fantastic. Next, I will do the shake and bake process, which is the final step. And here's the final step, what I call shake and bake. We want to make sure that the sealant is coated all throughout the inside of the tire and potentially seal up any trouble spots that might be leaking air. So I usually start with a valve at the bottom and just shake back and forth like that just to get the sealant to jiggle around the place. If the tire is being uh, particularly naughty, I'll often lay it on say a bucket of some kind of flat like this on one side for uh, say 10 minutes and then I'll repeat the shake and bake that I just did, then I'll flip it over, leave it on that side for 10 minutes, do a bit more shaking around, and usually that solves the problems of a stubborn tire. 
I also like to roll the tire along like this, just to uh, get the sealant to kind of coat itself around the inside. And shortly I'll take these wheels on a bike for a little ride to make sure they're running nicely. And obviously I'll repeat the process with the front wheel. So there you have it, tires mounted and holding air nicely. All that needs to happen now is for me to install these onto one of my bicycles and go for a ride and take a shower at some point because I'm really sweaty from all of that activity here in North Central Florida and I've been bitten to hell by mozzies. Anyway, I digress. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful and somewhat insightful. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. I'll see you in the next video.